Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Sky Knight. Uh, I've been running Debian now for a couple months, and I was happy with it for the most part. It was uh, it was fine to use. I didn't really have uh, any complaints with it, but it just I wasn't having fun uh, with it anymore. Uh, it was either well, it might have just been that I was using uh, BSPWM. Uh, BSPWM kind of lost its novelty for me. Um, I just wasn't really having fun with it anymore. I'm not sure if it was you know, because I wasn't like actively learning anything with it anymore. Or, I don't know, I just kind of felt like I either I kept getting in the way of it, or it kept getting in the way of what I was trying to do. Maybe I just wasn't, uh, you know, working as well as I could have been with uh, BSPWM or slash Debian, you know, who knows. Uh, so recently I tore everything down, uh, basically bombed everything, installed Arch, and have been running Arch now for a few days. And I gotta say, man, I missed Arch. Um, I'm running Arch with a KDE desktop now. Here is my current desktop. Uh, there's not a hell of a lot that I've really configured yet. Uh, as far as like the actual applications themselves, I am using Dolphin. I like the way that it works. Uh, Alacrity, I switched back to Alacrity from Kitty. Um, the only reason I really used Kitty is because the uh, the integration with the Rangers uh, image or image preview uh, was really easy to use. Uh, but now that I'm back on KDE, I probably won't be using Ranger as much if at all. Um, so yeah, I switched back to Alacrity. It doesn't have all of the additional bells and whistles that Kitty has, but again, I wasn't using those regardless. Uh, Audacity, I still think it's fine. People in, uh, there's a bunch of uh, hate for it recently. Um, I don't know, it's fine. I don't, I don't, I don't mind. Uh, CMake, Cuttlefish, I didn't install either of those. Those came with this. I uh, got Discord, Dolphin. Uh, Dungeon Craft is a really handy uh, way to make uh, maps, specifically for uh, my D&D groups that I DM for. I use this a lot to make custom maps. Emoji Selector, I should probably just delete that. Um, I can't do that from here. I don't think I would ever use this. I'm not even entirely sure what it is. Uh, so we got Fantasy Grounds Unity, you know, what I play uh, D&D on. Info Center, I didn't install that. KDE Connect, amazing. I would recommend that to anyone that's running Linux and has a Android-based phone. Um, you can essentially text from your computer. You'll get notifications from your phone onto your computer. Uh, it's super, super freaking handy. Uh, Kaden Live Video Editor, that's what I'm re-editing this video on. Uh, Nextcloud desktop. This is my, I guess, Nextcloud instance hooked up to my uh, server in the other room. Uh, right now it is uh, just being accessed through a local IP so we can take advantage of my uh, 10 gig internet uh, so I don't have to go out to my reverse proxy uh, and then pull it there. Go through my reverse proxy on the node just to uh, pull things down from my own house. Uh, although I do have the reverse proxy for when I'm, you know, not in my own network that I can still pull it down with the same address. Uh, OBS Studio. That's what this is being recorded in. Obsidian. Oh my boy. Uh, <laughs> Obsidian. I recently stumbled on Obsidian. Um, it is quite possibly the coolest note-taking application that I have ever fucking seen. Uh, it, it, it's essentially just a uh, markdown editor, but let me show you one of the features that it has here. Uh, so this is for one of my campaigns that I'm running. Um, so all of these are different notes, and as you can see, they all have you know lines going to different things. Uh, so if we Hop on the Valor and Pinger here. It, you know, has a couple, a couple highlighted words. Uh, we can jump 
into different uh, notes, essentially. And it's it's super, super fun to use. And after you're done, like, making notes for the night or whatever, you can, you know, look at this cool friggin' graph view. Uh, move these around if you want them to move around and see, the, you know, what's all connected to what. And I just think it's cool as hell. I, I don't care who you are. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, I'm using that for one of my uh, dungeons, or my only Dungeons and Dragon campaign that I am uh, currently DMing for. Uh, let's see where where are we at. Uh, so passwords and keys, I have uh, Seahorse as the uh, front end for this. Uh, I'm using uh, Gnome Keyring for the back end. Uh, it's just instead of having to worry about doing all of that extra work for the uh to get the ssh agent working i just install this and use it and that works super handy uh works really well uh pathfinder uh, that's the game i'm currently playing uh the first one kingmaker uh, i'm about 40 hours into it so i think it's halfway done if i'm if i if i've read all that correctly uh, I enjoy it. I'm a pretty big CRPG fan. I uh, loved all the Baldur's Gate games. I have Baldur's Gate 3 on my... Oh my god, I have a couple hundred games on my uh, Steam haven't even played list yet. Uh, but most of them are you know, CRPGs or RPGs, something of the like. A remote viewer, I'll probably switch this out for Remina. Remina? I'm not sure entirely how it's pronounced. Uh, I'm comfortable with that one. And actually, now that I think about it, I don't really have any use for Remina at the moment. Uh, I used to use it to log into my uh, server in the other room or, you know, remote desktop into the server, but it's a headless server now, so everything would be through command line anyway. So maybe I'll just get rid of Remote Viewer altogether I won't need either of them uh, steam obviously uh, system monitor I did not install that system settings and I missed I missed and I dreaded coming back to this so many different options so many menus within menus but it's it's cool uh, so I guess a little quick rundown you know dark theme uh, I'm using Breeze Dark. I haven't gone through and actually downloaded any global themes yet. I like the way that this looks so far. Uh, I got Oxygen as the uh, application style. Plasma style, I also have Oxygen. I really like what it does to the title bar down here. Uh, gives it a nice uh, gray to black gradient. I think it looks cool. Uh, window decorations, also Oxygen. I just... I like the little border. Uh, as you can see, I have wobbly windows turned on, which I think is also cool because I have a beefy fucking computer and why not? Uh, fonts, oh, that should probably be fear of code as well. Uh, my standard fear of code uh, setup for the fonts, icons, breeze dark, I'll probably download a different set of icons. Cursors, as always, I'm going with the oxygen yellow. I just think a yellow cursor is really to find, easy to find on any background that I've ever used. So that's what I use. Uh, splash screen, I also haven't done anything with this. I really like there's a, uh, a global thing, uh, Monokai, uh, that comes with a pretty fucking badass splash screen. I'll probably download the global theme just to get the, the splash screen. Uh, And what else do we have? Oh, time shift. Uh, obviously for backups that had to be installed with the uh, AUR since it isn't in the uh, Arch repositories. Uh, Vim for you know, my text editing. Uh, Virtual Machine Manager uh, for you know the GUI to manage my VMs. Uh, and I actually broke my entire VM setup, I 
I was going to uh, delete the bare bones to beautiful VM uh, because I, in the process of installing Arch, you kind of had to redo or installing Arch, I had to redo basically everything. And basically I just wanted to delete just the virtual machine. I forgot to uncheck, you know, take out the storage path with it. Uh, so just boom, boom, boom. And it was gone forever. So that'll be the second time that I completely nuked my bare bones, a beautiful VM. I might just scrap that series at this point. I don't want to have to, I don't know. I mean, maybe I'll, maybe I'll make it a bigger, beefier VM with, uh, more ability to actually create further virtual machines from within it because that was that was pretty neat uh, maybe i'll just keep it on as a way to you know fiddle around with bspwm or debian or you know what have you i think that is about it for the uh the applications oh vivaldi for my browser i like vivaldi um sure it's a huge resource hog and it uh takes up a hell of a lot of Hell of a lot of space, but man, I can't get over the uh, the F2 just to open up your bookmarks, and it's just super handy. Love this. Oh, I guess I should say uh, for my AOR manager, I'm using Paru instead of Yay. I believe it is because Yay is technically no longer being developed, if I remember correctly, and Paru is kind of the new the new hotness or the direction that it has gone in. So I've just been, I don't know, ever since I've really been on Linux, I've used Paru instead of Ye. And I think Paru sounds less stupid than Ye. I don't know. I feel less stupid uh, typing in, you know, uh, Paru dash SS for an update instead of, you know, Ye, but, you know, what have you. Although one thing I'm going to miss about Debian is that they don't have anywhere near as frequent of updates. Although, that was kind of an issue on Debian because well, the last uh, version of the NVIDIA driver that uh, Debian had, it kept crashing my uh, Xorg server. Like no matter what, it was a brand new fresh install uh, and then I threw the, uh, the proprietary NVIDIA driver, I don't know what version it was. It was obviously behind this one because this one doesn't crash um i've had this up and running for a day or two now uh but it would be every time i would leave uh, my debian system running maybe it was something to do with bspwm i'm not entirely sure uh but it would essentially crash to the tty and you know i could start it up again easy enough by just you know start x but whatever uh and for this i am Using the Display Manager SDDM, um, it just bootstraps a bunch of things and makes it a lot easier to uh, get in. And oh, I've been kind of over the minimalist. Um, now stare at a black screen until you hit Start X. And uh, yeah, I mean, I I paid way too much money for this. <laughs> for the uh the components in this computer to worry about the resource usage i mean i gotta do i even have i don't even have neofetch in here let's add that quick uh so yeah i have uh uh we're running a right now on linux uh on arch we're running the 3080 ti i'm gonna put the 1080 as the uh, PCI pass through to my gaming VM. Uh, I also swapped out my gaming VM drive and my and this drive. Uh, so the drive I'm currently on right now is the two terabyte. All right, I guess I can show you that as well. Uh, the drive that I'm on right now is this. Uh, or I guess it, it's supposed to be a two terabyte uh, NVMe drive. It, used to have uh my windows vm used to be on there uh, right now windows is still involved or er, installed on this vm or on this disc here i just haven't uh you know 
recreated the virtual machine for it, but all the data is still living here. Uh, then I got my uh, 500 gig recovery drive that just stores a whole bunch of time shift information. Uh, my virtual machines are running on a 250 gig drive. I think I'm going to be upgrading that soon to maybe a terabyte or so, so I can actually get some sizable VMs on there, because everything I have right now is... I don't know, you get a bunch of 40 gig virtual machines and that takes up space real quick. Uh, but yeah, I will probably be on Arch with KDE for at least a little while. I'm sure it won't be forever because I'll get bored of this and uh, probably decide to try uh, tiling window managers out again or hell. Might try to go to uh, XFCE or maybe even GNOME or who knows? Who knows? Uh, but right now I'm happy with happy with KDE, happy on Arch. Very glad the AUR is back in my life, even though I haven't used it for much. I mean, the only thing that I have through the AUR right now is uh, is well, I guess the AUR helper Paru. And uh, time shift for some reason. Time shift still isn't on the main packages of Arch, but I, I don't know. Maybe they want you to use rsync or something. That's just tedious. All right. Well, yeah, that is uh, that's what I've been up to the last few days. Uh, basically, rebuilding everything in Arch. Uh, the boot up period is a lot faster instead of having to build the whole desktop environment from the ground up. Which don't get me wrong, that was a hell of a lot of fun. I, I did have a lot of fun building Debian up from, you know, nothing. But just being able to install, you know, a browser, a file manager, uh, Xorg server, Xrander, and I think it was just Plasma. I think that was it. So it was like five things that I had to install and all of a sudden, boom, I'm up and running. It was, uh, it was a nice refreshing change from I guess it wasn't even really a slog uh, setting up BSPWM with Debian or really with any system, but uh, this is, I don't know. I don't, I don't mind the extra weight. I mean, I've got 64 fucking gigs of RAM in this thing and I've got more power than Linux is ever going to be able to use. I got more power than I think Caden Live is able to use it. Yeah. All right. Well, anyways, uh, I'm Sky Knight. Thank y'all for hanging out with me and uh, listening to me babble on about my my recent Linux experience uh, switching back to Arch and uh, KDE. Uh, yeah. See you.